Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pod Fathers, the best parity podcast in the universe. It's your pal Clem here. We got Large over in Dirty Jersey, Chaps down in Tejas, Joey Langone, and Nikki the Good behind the virtual screen of silence. And we are back and we are ready to roll, ready to roll, ready to roll. Stula Palooza was yesterday. We're taping this on Monday, May 2nd, right now. And, uh, Large, I am I am at zero percent energy just from standing up and chasing the kids around Stu's house. I can't imagine what you know people who were actually partaking in the festivities and having themselves a ball last night. I'd say Stu is probably tired, but I don't know if Stu even has like if he's just hundred percent. He's like the Mario Dude, Star. Stu is every minute of his day releasing a video this morning at like five thirty of his way in. Oh my god, what a sick <laughs> Oh god. Uh, so Stula Palooza was was a great time. Um, it was a ve- it was a very interesting event. I will say that we had uh, it was family friendly. So I I rolled up with the two kids. Kate brought her kid. Um, Brandon Walker brought three of his litter. Uh, there was a whole bunch of and then we had a, a bar stool employee section with we had the units tank and Doug's. We had KFC there. We had obviously Large and Saint Anne made it. Uh, there was a ton of people, Frankie Borelli, uh, Michael, just, uh, it was basically, I said, it was the bar stool summer party. It, it, you know, Dave doesn't throw parties for us at his house. So Stu takes care of the business at his house. And, uh, I mean, I had an absolute blast and the pool, 88 degrees, kids went swimming. The best part about it was there were these two older ladies who were just walking by and I was just walking by them and I overheard their conversation and they're clearly don't know the first thing from Barstool. And she goes, the pool is 88 degrees right now. It's very warm. So the, the fucking 88 degree, the, the thermometer at the Stu Finer residence rings out in the streets to this day. Um, how was your time, large man? Did, uh, did AJ and Sienna enjoy their first time being high? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was uh, plenty of big fat clouds being uh, puffed yesterday. Uh, a lot of, a lot of like, uh, my wife can't really smell anything. That's probably why she married me, and she had no idea what was going on. And I'm like, I don't know, like, I don't know if we should be over here in this part of the uh, party. How sad right now. would that be if that's the actual reason Clem's wife married him? Is because she can't <laughs> smell. Like that's that's Clem's best quality is that his wife can't smell. <laughs> right. Like he was a teenager trolling outside a home for the blind. Just well, this guy's here. I can't smell anything, so fuck it. Might as well marry him. <laughs> I'm just putting like smelling salts under girls' noses to see if they Tired can smell of them. Clem putting hit like poo pooing on his own charm and Devin <laughs> and their good looks and sense of humor. Sick of it. And nice shaped head. You Incredibly always say nice shaped, shaped head. head. Yeah. <laughs> um, like AJ oh. was AJ was throwing down snacks, and all of a sudden he was like, "Man, this." Grateful Dad's not bad. I was like, all right, let's get him over to the bouncy house. <laughs> oh, that's true. The spread, I have to actually, like, maybe I should do a better job painting the picture for the spread. Um, there was, in the corner, there was the, the food section. You had just a massive barbecue that had dogs, burgers, chicken, sausage and peppers, just constantly filled with food coming off, and the food just kept going the entire time. Popcorn machine. Cotton candy machine. The kids were absolutely, I think AJ had three cotton candy. Pigs in a blanket or no? No pigs in a blanket, unfortunately. Not a switch to wow. be found in, in sight. Wow. Uh, I'm going to conservatively say 100 pies of pizza at any given Easily. moment. Easily. I saw that. I saw that picture that Daniela posted. And I almost downloaded that one app that will be like counting things for you, where if you have like a stack of lumber, it'll count how many two by fours. I almost downloaded that app just for that picture because I didn't want to go through and count all those different pies. <laughs> and that's they were like moving shit in and out. Like once there was enough boxes, they threw the old boxes out and then they started stacking a new boneyard, basically. They had the full roasted pig. But for people who don't know, um, if anybody remembers the movie The Godfather, which I think most people do, that when um, – uh, Michael had killed the police chief and that one guy and had to go to Italy and the rest of the uh, family had to go to their mattresses in the Corleone estate. That's where Stu lives. Like Stu's house is the house that the Godfather lived in for all intents and purposes, but on probably a bigger piece of property. So like we had people like directing us on where to park and all this stuff. It's, it's a very, the tents were huge, two huge tents. There was a couple of, um, um, card game table like they had a professional blackjack dealer right they had all these i miss that oh so they had these (laughs) these casino tables 
that you were playing. Stu's house kid. is like Disney World when Dave went and couldn't find the right Star Wars bride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's the the casino section. Didn't know about. <laughs> so there was a there was a casino section where they had a couple of tables, and if you didn't feel like playing for cash, they had a prize table that you could play for. And then another dealer was like doing a cash game and stuff like that. Then there was the pool and the pool house, which was absolutely secluded, right, compared to the rest of the party where everybody was. Giant bouncy houses, the fire dancers, the face painters, the whole deal. It was live um, bands, live bands too, the whole two time. Live bands, a DJ. Two, it was, two live bands. They, they, they funneled one band out that was there that sort of had a wedding ish band uh, feel to it, you know, more like traditional stuff. Then they brought in something that was a little bit more, you know, folky. They started singing like Wagon Wheel and shit like that. And that's when the air started to get a little thick. And then, um, and then they had a DJ set late at night which I'm glad I didn't stay for. So uh, Stu goes out in front of the crowd. Like he's one of those people on Saturday night live. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. (laughs) (laughs) But to think that, you know, I think we've all planned plenty, plenty of um, family parties where you've skimped at some point. Like you've, you're like, Oh, let's, you know, (laughs) linens or something like that. Just because you're doing so much on so many other things. I did not see any evidence of skimping in any, it, everything was so to excess, you know, like I said, Stu, can I, why would I grab like a, a ginger ale or something around here? And he gave me a gram of cocaine. That's not true. But you know what I mean? Like it was one of those things where it was just like, you ask for something. I'm sure he like, would have if you'd asked. I, I said, um, I was going to rip a cigar. A bunch of guys were ripping cigars. I thought there was like cigars out. Like He's like, hold on. He gave me his dog, Aria. And then he left for a half hour <laughs> through the dog with the cigars. And, uh, you know, just one on the most generous guy I know, Stu Finer, I think. The the uh, definition of the word mensch, I think, is you oh, have a picture of Stu Finer screaming at you in the dictionary is what you would find. Someone I'll, said, I'll never forget the time. I think it was Devlin or some. It was probably right when I first started working at Barstool. Pretty close anyways. And somebody tweeted out, like, does anybody have any weed in the city? And Stu Finer came in with two of those like office size garbage bags filled with weed. It, I mean, it had to be several pounds of weed. And he's like, who needs weed? <laughs> it's going through. It's like, God damn, dude. And that was the other table that was there. Uh, there was some sort of, I, what was it? It was just like, if you wanted to buy weed or they roll it for you, there was just a table. And that's where a lot of that smell was coming from that day. Yeah, there was there was a weed table and they kept it off to the side. And a lot of people because he has like a couple of be- um, pool houses. He has like a couple of like smaller buildings on the estate. You know what I mean? That seemed like they were it's more insane. than garages. Yeah. And um, but you know what I mean? Like converted garages or something like that or sheds, perhaps that he turned in. And so there was a lot of perhaps illegal stuff going on in there. But there was a table that was just uh, spread out with a with a bunch of uh of marijuana products and you were it was one of those things where similar to the buffet it was just a help yourself type thing honest to god i would never be so gauche as to say hey can i get a good cigar you know or something like that but that's the type of atmosphere oh hold and he'd on, be insulted my... if you didn't yeah yeah 100 like if somebody was at my house and eating and all that stuff and they were like hey can i get a good cigar I'd like, go fuck yourself right, like, right. right so Everything was just so help yourself. If there's anything I have a you bottle thought. of Dom in there, large. You mind if I pop that open? <laughs> yeah. No, and, and you know, I had said to him, "Would it be okay to?" We were trying to get the kids situated. And I said, um, "I was going to bring my daughter. Would it be okay if I bring a friend?" He's like, "Bring everyone she knows." And he meant it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if I could have got a yellow buzz, it would have been you know every parent would have had to sign. We got a huge get- disclaimer. You know? We really got to get his wife on the pod just to <laughs> talk about what it's like to be married to a dude like that because she's legitimate. If we put her in charge of like the congressional budget, I feel like we could get some things done. Right. If you could be married <laughs> to Stu Finer for that long and put up with the shit that he does on a daily basis, you have got to be an unbelievable negotiator, unbelievably stern in certain areas, and know when to draw the line. You have to. They it's met unreal. in grammar school. That, that, like, that's how long they've been together. And he's, he's like a good family man. Like his dad has been very ill. As people who follow him, he's very open about it. And so all of a sudden, they wheeled his dad out. And like he was in no shape to 
to drive anything, right? you yeah. know, like particularly a wheelchair, but he had his dad's, you know, attendance helping him out. And like when he went over and told his dad he loved him as his dad was leaving, it's such like a, like an openness that he is with his feelings that people don't really have as much nowadays. You see, Dude, he's, a, he's a great man. He knows all religions. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, podcast that he did on Out and About with Pat talking about his son coming out of the closet was really, really good too. Yeah, he's an HR liability sometimes here, right? He says some things that you're like, oh, boy, so you're going to get in trouble for that. But he has a pure heart of fucking gold, for for lack of a better term. He's the absolute best. Um, so shout out, Stu. Uh, oh, we also got a uh, actually I shouldn't break. I, I won't I won't go into details on the pod. I don't know how much he wants it out there, but I did get Frank the Tank's conception story. He shared that with me out of the blue. I think when people at Stu Fighter's house, people just want to, you know, have fun and, and, and let loose. So Frank the Tank told me about his conception story. That was kind of a weird uh, part of the day right there. Wait, when Frank the Tank was conceived? <laughs> no, he was con- somehow birthdays came up and Frank the Tank was like, Clem, do you know how I was conceived? Frank know that. <laughs> Who knows your conception story? So his besides um, like Brooklyn Decker, his, yeah, his his uh, buddy Abe Miranda, who always is like following Frank around and stuff like that. I guess he's Frank is Frank's dad is his godfather, and I guess his dad told Abe the story. I, I, I'm not even gonna get into it. Uh, to be honest, one of the things I wish you didn't know to begin with, but uh, it's the that was a very rude cock tease to the listener. Yeah, well, hey, maybe to Frank bring comes that on next up week. and then not give details is really dereliction of podcast duty. <laughs> if you guys want Frank to tell the conception story on the podcast next week, you tweet at him, you tweet at the Podfather Show, and we'll see what we can get done. I feel um, like but- his producer, Nikki Boy, has got to let that happen. Nikki the Good's got to get on that. I can Nikki. make it happen. What's that? Little crossover. I'm shocked you don't know the conception story. I figured that just came up on like an allow me to be Frank one day. No, know, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure he has told it. <laughs> um, allow me to be frank before um but that i mean if you try even if i try and timestamp that podcast it's impossible to find anything <laughs> i mean this guy he goes off the rails within the first minute and then i'm it's just like any skill i have at producing goes straight out the fucking window <laughs> yep that's our guy frank the highlight of the day for me personally other than the kids just tiring themselves out in the uh bouncy houses and sleeping on the you know throughout the night because they were so tired uh our boy kfc was there as i said and he had some you know it was pretty cool he had some uh fans coming up some stoolies asking for pictures and whatnot oh, no <laughs> no do you want me to tell it or do you want to tell it fucking i'm sitting there next to kfc <clears throat> And I've done this before. When I first started here, I, you know what? I say that like it's when I first started here. I was here for years. And they asked me to go down and like, like that. And I was with KFC and fights. And I am, I am so less recognizable, even though I look like a cartoon character, than either of those two guys. That I spent a fair amount of time on that trip taking pictures for other people of them with KFC and fights. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I was almost their cameraman. Yeah. No I mean, like, it's like hey, that look. when I went to Wrigley with big cat. Yeah. Which is fine with me. I totally get it. I totally know my space in the pecking order. I am a V list celebrity, right? So we're there yesterday and some guy comes over and he was stoned like a babylonian whore this guy was fucking <laughs> out there and he's like he didn't even know kevin's name hey you're the guy from barstool and all that stuff and then talking kevin's like yeah he's like do you mind if i get a picture and kevin's like no so i say do you mind i'll take your camera and i'll take the picture for you and so this kid was in his late 20s so now meanwhile i'm dressed relatively stylish i'm not in a i'm not in like a cardigan and a cane or anything like that. And the kid says, I love says, where this is going already. You see that? He said, You see that circle? That's what you press. It was an, it was an iPhone. That's oh, what you press to uh, take the picture. I said to him, I was like, What? And he thought I didn't understand. He's like, Sometimes those circles for cameras, my picture is actually inside of it. It's not a picture, it's actually the button you press. So Kevin sees this going down. And he says, So when we go to take the picture, he's like, So you got that, Grandpa? He says to me. And the kid turns to Kevin. It's like, oh, shit, is that your grandfather? Oh, like, oh, my God. Damn. <laughs> you are half a hundred. 
<laughs> I know I'm half on it. <laughs> and uh, so obviously Kevin was like, I mean, it was just, it was delicious for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> the guy's like, no, I'm sorry. What he's like, what's your name? I was like, by coincidence, everyone calls me Pop Pop. And then Kevin starts laughing, and I just like, you know. The damage was fucking done. Kevin was like, I'm fucking so glad. Pop, pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Pop Pop. It's glad Jeff's Pop Pop. Uh, and the thing is, I almost had it on camera. You know what I mean? Is that your grandfather? I was like, oh, no. No, that happened. And once, and then obviously, Kevin, the the, the bitch he is, as soon as uh, Clem Dad came over, he was like, Clem, Clem, Clem. Kevin's like 40. Like, even, even his dad is insulting. He's the father of two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, I, I honestly felt like the Mets had traded for Mike Trout. Kevin was so excited to tell me the story. He's like, climb, climb over here. I got to tell you something. And then that story goes down, and I could just see that the life drained from Large's eyes. Uh, <laughs> terrible. Unbelievable. So I knew we had to throw that out to the podcast as soon as I heard that. Um, pop, pop. Uh, so pop up, you had a big, big absolutely pop up. <laughs> you know, people, oh, everyone, if you're listening to the show, just tweet at large pop pop at least sometime this week. You gotta yeah. change your Twitter name to pop pop barstool. <laughs> I, I may have to change your uh, by entering your phone too. It might just say large pop pop. pop. I mean, how great would it be to hear Canelo call you pop pop? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm start giving everybody five dollar bills. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> you, know I mean? you, you should. You use... should be like a pocket full of Werther's Originals guy. <laughs> right. uh, by the way, oh, by the, I talked to I talked shit about my dad a lot. He saved my life one time with a Werther's Original, though. Give me it. Yeah, uh, we were at, I believe, a Golden Corral or a place sort of like Golden Corral, and I got one of those. Where there's originals and you know they can be slippery because they're the circle with like very smooth toffee that they have popped it in the mouth hit my tongue like a fucking water slide went straight down the gullet got stuck in my throat my dad popped into action Heimlich maneuver right there in the restaurant popped out wow Uh that's that's like my biggest fear in life is having a kid choke and not know how to do the Heimlich maneuver i had to do it on kelsey once really yeah we were driving and I still don't let the kids have like hard candy in the car because it was so traumatic. Like Kelsey was riding in the back seat. We were going from like the bank or something. And you know how the banks would used to give you uh, the little dum dum lollipops? Yep. Well, like the stupid little kid that she was, <laughs> like <laughs> chewing on the stem. The stem comes off and flows down her throat. She's like, uh, uh, in the back. I see her on the in the rear view mirror pull over to the side of the road, rip her out of her car seat, hit her on the, like in between her shoulder blades. And it, and it comes out, but she, her face is like turning really red. I, I thought she was going to legit choke before I could get over on the side of the road. Scary. It was on 95, just outside of DC. Chaps, I will tell you right now, the fact that you don't let your children have hard candy in the car, it, it's amazing how it's going to stay with them. Yeah. Like yeah. their children probably, I, mm-hmm. I remember going to college and somebody was like, um, I had a headache and somebody's like, oh, you want some aspirin? I was like, no, no, rise disease. They were like, you're fucking 19. Like, because my parents didn't believe. Now I'll yeah. eat uh, an Advil that pops out of the carpet. You know what I mean? Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. Care. But yeah. those little things, like, just, it sticks for you. Dude, I, I no- thought I, well, I was in the Marine Corps. and got stung by a bee during, like, jungle training in fucking a Satan show Okinawa, Japan, like, in the middle of nowhere in the, de- in the well, jungle. <laughs> and I had to tell him, I was like, do you guys have an EpiPen? I'm deathly allergic to bees. And they're like, well, you should have told us that before. No, we don't have one. And I just waited around. Nothing ever happened. I went to an allergy test. My mom had told me that I was allergic to raw eggs, tomato <laughs> plants, penicillin, bee stings, and all kinds of other shit. And I go in there, they do the allergy test where they do like 500 things down your back, you know, yeah. where they do all the yeah. little pokes. The, the only thing test. I was allergic to was cedar and mold. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not allergic to bee stings. And they're like, nah, bro, you're totally fine. You can be a beekeeper if you want. <laughs> I do Mrs. Chaps just going, hey, mom, I want a, uh, 
I want a tomato sandwich. Oh, you're allergic to tomatoes. I want a bee thing for Christmas. Oh, you're allergic to bees. Like she knocked out so many things that fucking strangled your childhood. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, awesome. uh, that's basically what like Bobby Boucher, she, her, his mom calls everything the devil that she yeah, didn't like. Exactly right? what it was. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame her because I did. I was a rap scallion and got into some stuff. So I could see like, Telling me that I'm allergic just to reduce the likelihood that I egg somebody's house. <laughs> it seems like a, a nice little proposition to have. Whenever I go on the dog walk, I'll get questions like, hey, Clem, is this true? Like, like as a dad, why, why do parents do this? And uh, I remember Chief said, like, do your kids ever turn on the light in the backseat? And we tell you tell them it's illegal. I go, yeah, I tell them that every single time. All the time. By the police. And it's like, why do they do that? It's like, because it's distracting. I don't want to fucking deal with that shit. And it, it's one of those things, like you said, large gets passed down from generation to generation. And Dum Dums, looking back, Dum Dums. Like how much percent of their sales is just for like banks and barbershops just to give away to the kids, right? That has and to be pinata like, stuffers. Yes, and pinata and stuffers. Big pinata thing, yeah. And all all those dum dums are consumed by kids probably between the ages of what two to ten. And those are the fucking idiots that are gonna bite them off and choke to death and almost fucking, you know, make you do the Heimlich maneuver. It's actually kind of scary that well, what if you're there was first- adult versions though, Clem. Like, because right now you have lollipops that are all like grape, apple. If you went after the adult market on that and you did like a lavender lime type of lollipop or something like that, a little more advanced taste. Like a LaCroix of of candy. Yeah. I think you're out of something, Chapsy. The Sugar this from- Factory has uh, lollipops named after celebrities. So, like, if you decide to do something designer, like Fergie's is, like you said, boysenberry or whatever. Uh, Kim Kardashian's is, like, strawberry with a little bit of semen. Like, there's all these, like, (laughs) little, you know, mix and matches. And they're, like, 12 bucks a piece, you know. And then, there's you know, there's obviously the weed ones now, too, which people just go around sucking on the THC lollipops. I mean. Or those root beer ones from 3G. By the way. I, I did the the nines this weekend, the Delta nine. I was, I was on Mars. <laughs> Honestly, I was on, I was on fucking Mars. And he sent me upstairs. I was, <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> yeah, I went upstairs and giggled all night. I was on fucking Mars. <laughs> have you done great British baking show yet though? I should have fucking done that. <laughs> By the way, we took the TV it. out of the room. I told you, did I tell you that? We took no. a TV out of our bedroom. I just, I, I felt like putting a TV on the bedroom every night just wasn't that great. It, you know, like there's a balance between falling asleep on the couch if you're watching TV in the living room yeah. or falling asleep to TV every night. Like, I don't, I don't know. So we took a TV out of the bedroom. I can always watch it on my phone, too, you know, but, um, and it's, it's changed our lives for the better a little bit. I, I like not having a TV in the bedroom for the first time in a long time. So that's I, a little tip. Just the thought of that made me want to die. Like oh, you have one? You're oh, a big yeah. TV guy, huh? In the bed? Me? You have one? Yeah. Oh yeah, we watch TV every night before we fall asleep. Like that's what we do. That's our time. We usually will have like, well, we were having a glass of wine, but I was getting too chubby, so we scaled back from the glass of wine a night, and now we make like almost mocktails where we have these. I get little soda waters and add different types of like simple syrups and stuff that I'll make to it and have like a mocktail. So we have like an adult time while the kids are away so we can return back to being adults. Oh, I do miss that. I do miss the thought of being an adult because you can't be an adult with little kids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're just cleaning up after their ass. And then by the time they're asleep, you just want to go to sleep. Uh, My wife and I, what do we get into? What do we watch? Oh, we watched the genius documentary. So I don't know why I said it, like documentary. Um, did you guys see that on Netflix? No. It's about Kanye. It's fucking, it's, if you, if you were a Kanye fan, even like more so back in the day, the early albums and stuff like that, it is top notch behind the scenes uh, stuff. But it is one of those moments where I actually feel like an adult. It happens once every six months or so large. That was the night we went out to dinner. I had tapas. We had a bunch of, we had some steak tips, some, uh, you know, risotto balls and stuff like that. And then the kids were sleeping early and we got to actually have like, it was like a date night in our bedroom. Risotto balls, arancini, I believe, truffle arancini at that, right? It was, uh, it was a delicious thing. So, uh, zut. Uh, so, so large, you just took it out because you were just, just not good, just not good for the, the sleep, the mental health side of things. Yeah. I like, I think, <clears throat> listen, like, I think to Chaps's point, if, if his children were a little bit older, maybe you would have the proper, mm-hmm. 
privacy on the mega couch. And that would be all you need, the mega couch with the TV, you know, that would be almost more like your room. But I can understand when kids are coming in and sort of, you know, especially if you have a big old couch, they want to be on it, they want to be with you and stuff. So then to have an oasis is is a great idea. We used to have it, especially with the other house, because it was a little bit of a separate. But with this thing now, like everyone's kind of off on their own. It's unbelievable how much like <laughs> lately, how much freedom that we've had from the kids. And um and so like we're, we're at a point now where when we go up to bed, we just kind of want to go to bed, you know, as opposed to like stretching it out for another hour or something like that, which we could use to have sex. Right. Or, mm. or something like that. Or, Hell yeah. or wash each other or bathe each other, or, you know, or, <laughs> 15, or put 15, like 30. exotic salves on each other. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Made yeah. from natural fruits and berries. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love a salve. <laughs> nice. Rub honeycomb on each oh, other. Right. True. Yeah, a, a pumice stone. Under the guidance expo- of your doctor, obviously. We exfoliate, yeah. So instead of TVs, we brought in a bunch of a series of tarps, and mm. we use them for different reasons. <laughs> it's just made a difference. We've noticed <laughs> that this house has a lot better beams than the ceiling. <laughs> Large, so, I think I need a blog from you for to promote this episode this weekend. It's just 100 things I can do in my bedroom now that the TV is gone. And right. let's just let's go to work on that. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a yeah. lot, but... Delta this man- nine. Delta nine is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing you could do instead of going from the bedroom, you go down to the kitchen, make yourself a nice little meal. This we know large is a killer in the kitchen. He's a culinary masterpiece of a man. And that's why you got to get yourself some every plate. It's America's best value meal kit. Large is throwing around money on his Delta nine. You need to save a little cash. That's why you got to go to every plate. Every plate helps you skip the tedious trips, <laughs> trip to the grocery store and delivers everything you need to cook consistently affordable and delicious meals. You treat from 17 weekly recipes and they deliver pre-portioned ingredients easy to follow recipes right to your front door i'm not good with getting all those different ingredients at the grocery store stuff i'm never going to use you get too much like ginger root or something you just have ginger root in your fucking refrigerator for fucking years i don't need that kind of nonsense every plate offers delicious dinners that won't break the bank and recipes come in just six simple steps in just about 30 minutes so even if you're a parent like me that has kids on the uh, that keep you on the run you can get everything cooked quick and the best part that i love about it they have different meat seafood and veggie options plus you can swap out proteins and veggies in case you have kids that don't want to eat anything like a certain cardi that will only eat macaroni and cheese Chapsy wants to mix things up a little bit to, to satisfy Cardi's taste buds. Everything will be okay. So get started with every plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code FATHERS179. That's up to a $104 value. Again, get started with every plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code FATHERS179. Get yourself the chicken, sausage, and tomato linguine. I feel like Chaps, Chaps you a linguine guy? Oh, buddy, you know I love a good thing. <laughs> so uh, that's our every plate. So thank you for them for sponsoring the pod. Um, wait, Chapsy, did you have something going on with uh, spaghetti the other day? No more spaghetti in your in your life? Yeah, the, the old doctor told me that I got to take it easy on the acid. So no oh. red sauces, no gravy for me anymore. Oh, um, Chapsy, the Newark airport is going to be, it's, they're going to be looking at you like, hey, sir, over here, Uncle Chaps. Well, I told the doctor, I said, look, I will reduce the amount that I'm eating, like pickles and fucking spaghetti and all that shit, but I'm not going to reduce it to zero. Like, I'm just not going to do that. I'm no coward. I know that life has pain involved, (laughs) and I will take that pain occasionally whenever I need a good spaghetti fix. Uh, There's many things that suck about getting older, getting stuff on your diet limited. That is right at the top of the goddamn list. There's plenty of other options at every plate shops. I'll tell you all about We have gravy lovers, meatballs. We have creamy mushroom steak, chicken noodle soup. Who doesn't love chicken noodle soup? Soy glaze, pork meatloaves, all that kind of stuff. Um, But our poor poor daddy boy. Uh, Large, we have a big weekend coming up for you, pal. And you just had a big weekend at the garden, too. Yeah, uh, boxing it does that thing in, the, in these horse latitudes of the sport world. Right. So they they kind of jam in a lot of stuff. So the ladies, um, women's boxing, female boxing, had its biggest night in the history of the sport on Saturday in the Garden. Katie Taylor won a split decision versus Amanda Serrano. She retained all five belts. If there is a rematch, it's being said that it'll probably be in Dublin. Ooh. Ooh. Um, great event. Packed Madison Square Garden. Loud as shit. 
And then um, right after that, we go right into Canelo week. So Canelo versus Dimitri Bivol this Saturday. Dave, Dan, and Robbie are on the call on the alternate feed <laughs> of the zone, the zone.com slash barstool. I'm doing the pre-fight show for the zone um, with Dan and I think Roan. So me, Roan, and Dan are going to be doing the pre-fight stuff leading up to the main card. And then Dave, Robbie, and Dan will be doing four full fights four fights of fucking oh. commentary that's a that's a lot um so yeah so the rough and rowdy crew will be on that i'll be doing the pre-show i have three branded content episodes coming out this week myself and billy football we're in with canelo and bivol's camps so we have that and i'm gonna be boots on the ground all week in um in vegas i'm leaving tomorrow god bless man yeah so, so good so a uh, big couple of weeks in box a uh, big spring and summer season in boxing and looks like barstool is is invested. The chaps got to see his first big fight down in San Antonio. That started the whole thing, and we're just going to keep going. I'm still trying to find on my phone the "Hey Clem, do you want to come to MSG and, and watch the fights with me tonight?" I guess it didn't go through yet. Maybe it's because you're a pop pop, but you don't really know your technology. But maybe I asked, maybe I asked your wife, and she said no. Oh, okay, yeah. that sounds like something he she would go. say. Go. He's going <laughs> to Stu's, and I know he, I know he's going to abandon me by the bouncy house with the kids. Yep, yep, yep. That bouncy house was a nice babysitter, Clem. Oh, it's the absolute bouncy houses are the best thing in the world. Oh, and also yeah. Stu, I've seen the Stu uh playground that he's had where it has like the slide, has like the lot, you know, just your typical bouncy has a little like rickety bridge. Yeah, I've never seen this in anyone's videos or pictures. To the side, there's this outdoor ball pit that is just it's a permanent fixture there, and it is a ball pit that is you know a good like four feet deep, and it just that is something that you, you could just have your kids in for an hour on itself. But disagree. Two- Ball pits, one of those things we talked about earlier. Like it's it's the same thing as tomato plants for me. My mom told me about a story <laughs> about some poor kid in Florida getting ate up by a fucking water moccasin at one of those playhouses. <laughs> Never wanted to go another one again. And I'll be damned if my children get in one. <laughs> oh man, Mama Chaps really did a number on you. She Daddy really boy. did. Holy shit! It's probably why I had to join the Marine Corps to do a reset. <laughs> um oh update from the casa de clem the uh, results are in sienna crushed absolutely murdered the girl scout cookie game again this year thanks to everyone who bought who purchased orders i think she finished the numbers we got weren't official because she ended up hitting three thousand for the entire year i think they had it at 2200 when the numbers came out on this uh chart next on the list was i think isabella s who had i think 800 followed by like a christina with a 700 just embarrassing she doubled them up yeah we have people sending me memes and everything the will chamberlain meme people she's the gretzky of girl scout cookies like (laughs) everybody else you combine their stats and they don't meet up with the great one sienna club it's like sienna sold more tagalongs than these kids sold total cookies right it's Mm -hmm. it's it's a crazy unbelievable dynasty i actually share like dragalongs because she's dragging their asses across (laughs) the finish line (laughs) <laughs> I have to go up. I have to find maybe next week. I'll find the prize sheet. We'll pick out the prizes for Sienna, but I think we get an Oculus. We get our choice between a Chromebook or AirPods. We're not she sure as shit is not getting AirPods. She can't even, uh, she loses her jacket at school. We're not giving her $300 uh, headphones and all that stuff. Uh, so shout out to everyone who purchased We I think, so what do I, do I need to get, do we need to have three years in a row for it to be a dynasty? Right. Cause I mean, it's two, we've murdered the fucking field, but I think three is where dynasty talk begins in terms of any competition. Like, it's, right. It's, yeah. I saw her yesterday in the pool and I was like, uh, congratulations, Sienna. She was like, uh, no biggie. And then just sort of like swam off. I'm like, ooh, that's cocky. That is cocky. <laughs> like, no biggie. I got a Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> Battle the way. It was awesome. She calls so. everything Chromebooks now, too. Like, I got a new iMac downstairs. She's like, Dad, can I go on your Chromebook? Because that's what they get from school. So she thinks everything is just a Chromebook at this point, which is a funny thing for the, the next generation. She thinks everything's touchscreen. She just puts her little fucking grubby fingers all over all my old man computers that are not touchscreen. Uh, so the dynasty, we're one away, so we'll, we'll get it started. I mean, I am concerned that like someone is going to move, someone from Barstool is going to move to New York and just absolutely wipe the floor with me. Like if if Big Cat's daughter was older, right, and he wasn't going to Chicago down the road, I like that's when the dynasty ends. No, I think there would be a revolt. I, I feel like Big Cat has his place of respect, but I think that once you have an established niche, And the bars of the world that people have to respect that, even if it's Dave or Dan that are trying to come in and steal that shine, 
you're the Girl That's Scout true. guy. You just <laughs> are. And anybody else that tries to come in and would re- try to replace you, I'm in your corner a thousand percent. Me okay. and Pop Pop Good. aren't going to allow that. To <laughs> Good to know. Stay <laughs> off the goddamn corner. Speaking of quarters, uh, oh, wait, shit. I had this whole thing on the list about Barnes and Noble thinking this was a chap's take. But it's a large take that came out. And I yeah. think we have to explore this a little more because there is something to it for sure. Large, what's your take here about Barnes & Noble? Every time uh, there's there's a phenomenon and it actually has a name um, that certain people, when they walk into large bookstores like Barnes & Nobles, they get a uh, almost uncontrollable urge to um, to to dump, to take Evacuate. Shit. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like I don't, I, I think, I don't choose to go to the bathroom outside of my house a lot. So when I do, I kind of remember places that I've been. Mm -hmm. Chaps doesn't have that luxury because of his condition. So Chaps has probably been to, you know, a thousand different places. And maybe you remember the cleanest. Like you might remember the dirtiest of places. Never go to that TD Bank or something like that. But you'll also be like the Starbucks on 5th and Main is for the bathroom. I don't have a ton of that. But I remember one day. Stay out of the Dollar General on the south side of San Antonio. That's absolute abomination. In there. <laughs> you probably could have told you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we used to take the kids for um, story time and we have a big Barnes and Nobles by us. So they have a big kids section like most Barnes and Nobles, I'm assuming does as a Starbucks, there's a big record thing. We're a listing station upstairs, but the kids section has all the faux trees in it. And underneath it, they do story time. So when the kids were very young, we used to take them there. And I'm telling you, it had to have been if we took them there 10 times, I think maybe three out of those 10, I've taken a dump. And that's unheard of for me. Unheard of with no like, it's not like we went there on Storybook Wednesday after Taco Tuesday or something like that. (laughs) That makes sense. And then sure enough, there's I I mean, I'm going to write about it. There's a phenomenon. It was found out by this Japanese um, whatever, anthropologist, sociologist or something. And it's called like the Murioka syndrome and people in bookstores, they're trying to figure out whether it's the smell of fresh print or feel, you know, and so I, I automatically went to you guys to ask if anyone else has had it. Nobody really has, but libraries and bookstores makes people want to shit. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to do a deeper dive into it. Uh, and that's it. Simple as that. I love it. I, I, yeah. I cause I have, I, I'm, I never shit in public. It's just one of those things. Want to just come home, basically ship break from uh, American pie, but I go in there. I'm just like, whoop, what's going on right now? So you're not alone people. So what's the name of the syndrome or whatever? Um, I'll hit it up right now. Mariaco. What's that? It's called the it's called the do, 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 the Mariko Aoki syndrome, Mariko Aoki syndrome. And it's 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 huge. It's a Japanese expression referring to the urge to defecate that is suddenly felt in entering bookstores. According to Japanese sociologist Shoizu Shibuya, the specific cause that triggers the defecation urge in bookstores are not yet clearly understood. There are also some who are skeptical about it, whether it's such a phenomenon or it's just an urban myth, or maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If a lot of people talk about it, then now mm. people might go into a bookstore and be like, you know what? I could take a dump. You know what I mean? So like yeah, you, yeah. You, you tell enough about it, but there was, you know, so it's called the Marioka, Mari, Mariko Aoki. And she was a Japanese woman who had first gone. And she had this thing. And so now this is named after her. <laughs> she's not pumped about, you know what I mean? Like Mike McCarthy syndrome, living with giant balls and a small penis. I'd be bummed. <laughs> yeah. you know? So maybe yeah. Mariko Aoki is not fucking pumped to have a thing where you have to shit in bookstores named after her. But here we are nonetheless. So um, a couple of things about this one. I'm going through a situation right now. I think I just got bit on the actual eyeball by a mosquito for the first time in my life. Wow. That's outrageous. I just had to turn my camera off. Look how watery my eyes are right now. That's Insane. not two. I believe this is a Pavlonian response large. And I think that this type of condition is going to diminish as the years go by because so many people used to read books or magazines or newspapers whenever they're taking a dump it's much like the bell when a dog would hear it and be paired with the food you're experiencing a pavlonian response whenever you read and you smell the books so much in the area because i would imagine it applies to bookstores as well as soon as you smell that it triggers a defecating response 
Absolutely. And so if you guys ever persons with a history of experience, the Mariko Aoki phenomenon are described as having book bowel. So if you ever hear the words book bowel, know that you heard a book bowel tendency. So, and it does say as everything moves online, it's tougher to judge this, but, uh, and one of the reasons kind of fits your description, uh, chaps is the book smart kids typically aren't the jocks. And this tendency is uncommon in so-called sporty males. Mm. So, you know what I mean? It sort of does kind of go back into that little, um, you know, small one. And I've never been uh, <laughs> called a sporty male. So yeah. I've been <laughs> 100 percent so uh so that's it so the mariko aoki effect i will say if and the thing is if you're kind of on the fence of do i want to shit at this place in public i feel like the barnes and old bathrooms have to be pretty fucking good looking inside has to be it's warm in there again the smell of the books are in the air it just feels like you're not going to go in and it's going to look like a shop right bathroom like chapsy is this a good bathroom what are we looking at on the chap scale right now using the ball scale on the chap scale obviously. i would say barnes and noble it really depends on the area of town that you're going to be in um they could they're very they a wide variety of types of stores but i would imagine that it's if we're doing tiers, I would say it's probably a C, C tier. It's mm. not a church. It's not a hospital a emergency room. <laughs> it's not anything like that. I feel like those are the places. It's not a hotel lobby that you can stop in that has an overhang awning where you could just scoop in there real quick, get in, get out, that type of situation. But I would say it's pretty good pretty good that's the actual that's pretty good is the uh, official rating the the most underrated i felt was home depot i went to a home depot bathroom once and it has all the stuff that you would remodel your bathroom with you're like oh maybe i'll get this vanity inserted into my bathroom so if 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 you have a home depot next to barnes and noble you may be surprised that that home depot is a nicer bathroom oh i'm picking i'm picking the bookstore over home depot because just the type of shitters that you have in there like yes like i would much rather shit after some nerdy dude that's reading game of thrones for the third time <laughs> than somebody that is fucking hanging chink like hanging cheat rock like it's just <laughs> that's just the fact i'll go one further with mariko aoki while we're talking about it these are also big bookstores in japan and the japanese pride themselves in their public bathrooms so mm. much so that there's something called toilet meals have you ever heard about this where people will go and take their lunches and whatnot <clears throat> google it toilet meal so people will take their lunches and they'll eat them in Japanese bathrooms as opposed to eating alone at a table. Like there's almost less shame than eating. So <laughs> they go through the whole thing. You know, Japanese have like Toto is the greatest fucking toilet seat ever made. I used to have the Toto 9000 or whatever. I used to clean and blow. Phenomenal my toilets. Ass. They'll yeah, warm your butt cheeks. They do pulsating. They do different types of stream, different <laughs> thicknesses of water levels. We're doing, we got a wide mouth or we got a shallow mouth. What are we doing here? It came with an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> to like program it. And it has but like so, the yeah. LED lights for like how warm you want it to be. 88, 88. I want my <laughs> asshole to be sprayed with 88. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see that people, co-workers and people in like cafeterias and whatnot will eat their meals in a toilet because there is more like water closet E type situations in Japanese bathrooms because of the bidets and whatnot. And so they call toilet meals. They're very popular over there. Japanese culture fucking fascinates me. It is, Sorry. but it's it's different. Like it's either a super high end or very yep. low end public bathrooms in Japan too. Because mm -hmm. there is ones, if you're going to a more skeedy side of town where they have just the trench like that's long on the floor, then you have to actually squat over it. But, yeah. And those areas in only Japanese areas are usually fine. But if Americans are mixed in, we have no idea how to squat and our knees are just way too bad to be able to do it. So you're just getting <laughs> back spray everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Marike Aoki and toilet meals. I feel like the in history. You got to <laughs> shave your vagina before you go there. Though. 100%. Mm -hmm. Do it anyway. Yeah. I feel like the American version of that is people that just eat lunch in their cars because they don't want to be around their coworkers. Like there's a bunch of people I've heard who ate lunch in their cars and like the cubes instead of wanting to, you know, go to the cafeteria, eat at their cube desk. I think 20% of Japanese adults that were, I, I can't believe we're still on this. I apologize. Were <laughs> that were polled had said that they had had a toilet meal before 20, a little less than 20%, which doesn't seem like a lot, 
But I think if you polled Americans, it would be a hell of a lot less. Like I know for a fact, I've never eaten a meal in a toilet. I've had a toilet meal. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'm looking to have toilet Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> but when I worked on the floor of the exchange, right before the bell rang, the men's bathroom was so fucking packed. And there would be guys waiting to take a dump with uh, bacon, egg, and cheese and a coffee in their hands. And, God, uh, they, that, and it was like, you know, like Grand Central Station. Like there was, there was no seat that wasn't already warm from someone else's ass. So you'd be sitting in someone else's warmth, eating an egg sandwich with all this cacophony of just fucking bowel destruction going on around you. Never me, but fuck that. Worst fuck. three days to do that. We got the day after Thanksgiving in the airport. We got fucking January 1st on there. And then I'm going to say July 5th. Like just the amount of hot dog shits we're dealing with there. It's got to be an astronaut. I mean, when you really break it down, the amount of shit that the toilets at like Atlanta's International Airport, the amount that those pipes have to swallow is just astronomical. <laughs> oh, 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 damn it. Uh, all right. Well, let's transition. This show. Let's steer this ship 180 degrees right now. We're going to shift it to the mailbag. And that is going to be brought to you by Harry's. What is Harry's? It is a men's grooming brand that provides all the grooming essentials you need. Harry's believes you shouldn't have to choose between a close, comfortable shave and a fair price. So they give you both. You don't want to be shaving your face as someone's eating a goddamn five course meal in the bathroom. Harry's priorities is simple quality craftsmanship at a fair price. You cannot go wrong with that. You get everything you need for a great shave and nothing but that Harry's blades hold up better than ever. Uh, guys who've tried to say their eighth shade of shave is as sharp as their first. Um, and first time Harry's customers can redeem a starter set for just $3 at harrys.com slash podfathers. You get a five blade cartridge, a weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and travel cover to protect your blades on the go. A $13 value for just three bucks. I love it. And you know who else loves it? Wifey loves it because they got, she has to shave the legs and everything. She says these are the best. Uh, blaze that she has and the best weighted handle um, and you make sure you can get like I said you can get your starter set for just three dollars uh, with the promo code oh, hold on one sec uh, harrys.com slash podfather new look same incredible offer there's really never been a better time to give harrys a try just go to harrys.com slash podfathers today to get your starter set for just three dollars that's harrys.com slash three dollars I'm did I interrupt you daddy boy no, you didn't. Oh, okay. Apologize for that. We're going to head to the mailbag now. Uh, hit us up on Podfather Show on Instagram or Twitter with any questions. Or this one actually came from Twitter, this uh, first question here. From Ryan, what would be the worst cartoon your kid watches that you have to spend an entire day in? I got to go with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. It just seems like an awful place. To uh, spend the day with them? Like an to entire, spend the day with the characters? Spend an entire day in a cartoon. What would be oh. the worst? Shit, probably Caillou. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Caillou. <laughs> I mean, his mom and dad are just cunts. Just like I, I feel like they're just big old pussies, and I wouldn't want to spend a day with them. And their little whiny ass kid. I mean, no offense, but like a kid that has a head shaped like larges at fucking as a toddler, disgusting. Like, get that kid out of my face. <laughs> we, I think, uh, the early days That's of Pop 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 head, not a fucking child's head. <laughs> the early day of Pop Fathers, I think we went really in on Caillou. I think he was actually called the cunt, but looking back now, it was his parents that turned him into such a cunt, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's a fair yeah. point. He's large. Large, what cartoons did your kids watch when they were young? Was that still like when the Flintstones was new? Or what are we talking about right here? This was before talkies. Uh, <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, Steamboat Willie. I never let my kids. I was always, I, I was just so turned off by the noises that came out of SpongeBob. I don't know the fucking. And I know the guy's a genius. The guy who voices SpongeBob's a genius. But um, so that, that whole just mess of kind of being under the sea, but nobody's really wet and all the shit that they serve, the Krabby patties and all that stuff. And everybody in SpongeBob annoys the shit out of me. So I would fucking dread spending a half hour, much less a day. And I'll tell you what, even like the kids in, I know it's not a cartoon, but what was I Carly? Mm. So many of those shows where I just, all those Disney show kids with that, like live action where they're assholes, all of them. Yeah. You just want to give them all a slap. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, I, I can't really think of many that I'd want to spend a day in i'd like to 
I'd like to hang with the Smurfs for a day. I, I'd like to get nuts <laughs> with the Animaniacs. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's fun. That's that's you know, I mean Gargamel, Darkwing Pasta. Duck. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, Scrooge McDuck, Ducktales, fucking Dumb something like that. Yeah, SpongeBob pull coins and, and break your goddamn them. neck. Another one that I would hate is Boss Baby. That little fucker. Oh. He needs he needs to come to Jesus meeting. He's got his britches are just too big for him. Uh, I hate that motherfucker. I hate the boss baby. Uh, what's his Templeton? You know, he always says Templeton. Just hearing the word Templeton would drive me nuts, let alone he's a fucking cunt too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the show because it makes my kids stop moving for however long I need them. They sit down, shut up. Coco Melon though, everything is in song. So you'd be living in nonstop songs. It's nothing but kids songs over and over for an entire day. That's that's like fucking Geneva Convention shit. That Coco is Bell, it's past me. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... I didn't know Miss Rachel was a person that was on YouTube. I thought Miss Rachel was like uh, Kate and Nick were talking about Miss Rachel on ZBT. And I thought Miss Rachel was just a daycare teacher in the area that was highly <laughs> lauded. I had she no got, idea she... this person on YouTube. <laughs> she uh, educated my child through COVID. So I found Miss Rachel during COVID and uh, she basically she, she just took it from there. I just let go of the reins and, you know, Gia, there she goes. We may have to get Miss Rachel on the podcast. We had Lori Berkner on during the pandemic just because uh, we were looking for guests and stuff like that. And she was A+. plus. Uh, she was actually, her and Large hit it off famously. You guys really had a, there was a little twinkle in the eye. It was very nice to see. So you we will get Miss Rachel. <laughs> but whatever and Andy's not in the room right um yeah so I, so for the younger pa- parents of younger kids out there uh Miss Rachel and Coco Melon those two things will get you through the day it'll take care of educating your kids and it'll take care of entertaining your kids you'll be all set best cartoons you'd want to live through I I'd love to be in the Bluey cartoon because I fucking love the Bluey family. Chaps, you you miss Bluey too, right? Like, yeah, I, I don't know that, Bluey either. I'm yeah. I feel like an old head out of the game. <laughs> um well, now i gotta watch out <laughs> we've had to put on more youtube restrictions because you'll have these algorithms where you start off watching minecraft videos and roblox videos next thing you know your kids doing fucking dances that extension ex- like made up and shit <laughs> you're like what are you doing you're nine why are you watching fucking rap videos and that's when i feel like i sound like one of my parents like why are you watching this mtv what's going on here but some of the stuff is legitimately insane and they should not be watching youtube is difficult because if you have parental settings they can't watch hardly anything like there's yep. There's no middle ground. It's like you're either watching some bitch twerk in a string bikini with half of her asshole ha- out in the wind, shaking all over the place, or it can only be like veggie tales about Joseph in the Bible. Like, it's like those are the only options on YouTube. It's it's true. I had to delete YouTube from all like the our, our Chromecast and all the smart TVs. And they call it white YouTube because that's the color of the icon, I guess. And then the black YouTube is our YouTube TV that we watch. And there's one remote that we have, though, that has a YouTube button and it always will pop on the screen like that's hardwired into the TV. And I hate to say it, Chapsy, but I'm with you. <laughs> I said this shit rots your brain. <laughs> like it sounds like something our parents said about MTV, right? It's the fucking worst getting old. But it's got to be kind shit. of true, right? Like be, like some of the things that are bad. And I understand that things go with the motion. Like I think they're d- discovering more and more research that says having screen time isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world if they're watching productive things like miss rachel like you can't have kids that are learning stuff and so going far but i mean i have let my kids cuss like we are pretty far on like liberalism i guess and like allowing our kids to say whatever they feel and they can tell us if they disagree with us and all those different things i draw the line at some hardcore twerking i just do (laughs) you don't so so like you will not read the twerk tuesday blogs by pat around the kids no and in fact i don't usually listen to podcasts but i was listening to uh part of my take the other day and our guy dan mentioned tongue punching somebody's butthole and cardi asked me what that meant (laughs) it's like well that guy's a father too from what i I know disappointing disgusting disgusting um well on that note we're just gonna end this episode on, on the spot right there because we'll have to talk to dan about that about cleaning up his potty mouth um large safe travels my friend good luck out there uh it's basically like the manning cast right this is gonna be like the barstool manning cast of the canelo fight and i hope that uh 
you and your grandson win. Oh God, if they're chaps, we have to have a way where Roan, because Roan will do this. He will find a way for Canelo to call large pop pop at some point during that broadcast. <laughs> so we need to figure out how to make that happen. And then happen. <laughs> First of all, it's abuelo. Be true. <laughs> Fair enough. That's right? true. That's, that's where you're fucking wrong. Poppy. Abuelita. Abuelito. Little oh my god. Um, all right. So everyone stay safe, stay sane, and uh make sure to hit up the, the podcast, uh, the Twitter account if you uh some pop pops or some Barnes and Noble stories, best bathrooms and shit and all that good stuff. So you guys stay safe and stay sane.